What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we got another 32 inch upright Pandora's box, but it's got a dedicated four way. It's been a good start to the year so far. I got a couple builds that already went out. I got a bunch of emails from you guys, which is great. Messages coming in on Instagram and all that. You know, I always reply. Videos coming up. I got this mini V pin that we're gonna be discussing to help out a customer that he sent me. I'm gonna be talking about my V pin. A lot of stuff, a lot of videos. But but on this one today, we're gonna to be discussing the 32 inch upright Pandora's box with a dedicated four way. Customer messaged me on Facebook Marketplace. Again, I'm on Facebook Marketplace, Offer Up, Craigslist. Those are the main areas. And then people message me on YouTube. They usually do find my website and then they do fill out the request form. So if you ever needed a build, Best thing is to go on the website that you'll see down below in the description and fill out a request form. This video is going out to Bayside, New York. I'm in Long Island, so it's not that far of a drive, so delivery is on me. Um, basically, customer messaged me on Facebook, saw the pictures, I sent him videos, he had a couple of questions and all that, but main thing that he wanted was that he wanted an easy setup for his nephews to play. Once you mention the word easy on it, I always suggest a Pandora's box. Now, surprisingly, on the counter and bodega video, I've been getting a lot of questions in regards to the Pandora's box that I specifically use, which is the Pandora's box 18S Pro. Um, I actually got a couple messages on Instagram. I even have a customer. He's actually lined up. I believe his name is Chris. Um, he actually came all the way down from Staten Island to check this specific machine out last night. So uh, Pandora's boxes, again, I'll, I'll, I'll go through a couple of questions and all that, but I'll get out of selfie mode because you guys don't like selfie mode. But um, let's just take a close look real quick. Let's first take a look at the cabinet real quick. So sent the customer. Customer really had no artwork preference whatsoever. Um, he was actually like, Vic, I don't even know what you mean by artwork. So I sent him a couple of images and all that. And then I actually sent him the Game Room Solutions website for him to check out some pre-made images. And he went with the Marquis image. Again, cabinet supplied by Game Room Solutions as always. No, I am not Ryan's cousin. Some asshole message that on YouTube, you're Ryan's cousin. No, I am not. I wish I was, I would get the stuff for free or be sponsored, but I am not Ryan's cousin. Everything's paid for like normal as if you paid for it. So um, again, going back to the artwork on this, he chose the Marquise. It's actually pretty cool. Very nice looking, very like color rich. I do like it. I do wish uh, Game of Solutions went with a glossy finish like my V pin is, but I can't complain too much. So again, Marquees on this is the name of the artwork on it. The actual control deck is pretty cool. You got your Galaga, Pac-Man, uh, Space Invaders. Nice little arcade logo up top. LED glow as always. And you got more um, marquees. What's cool about this is that um, this whole side is not the same. It's not duplicate as the other side. So there's a lot of marquees on it. I mean, it looks great. Even on the face, there's not any duplicates that are on the left to the right, even on the arcade control panel bottom beneath. It, it's really cool. Um, it looks very, um, what's the word I wanna use? It looks very chaotic on his website, like when you see it in the picture, but in person, it's actually a pretty sweet deal. So again, 32 inch upright, red T molding. Uh, again, even the customer was, you know, not many people understand what exactly I mean by artwork and such. I asked him what color buttons he wants. I suggested the Street Fighter color style. Um, I did send him a picture of somebody else's build. He did love the idea of non-LED. Concave buttons are great for really, you know, fighting, fighting games like Street Fighter and all that. If you're gonna really, not button mash like I just did, like a child would do, but these take a beating. Unlike the LED buttons, you know, they are kind of frail. Not in a bad way, but you know, wailing on these, they have a very cheap kind of silver clip on it. You'll see in my past videos of me talking about LED buttons. But he did like the combo where basically main game is concave, and then basically we have our menu buttons here or coin buttons here for LED to give it a nice little aesthetic look to it. So we got the buttons down. This again, dedicated four way on this amazing I, I i can't get enough of these dedicated four ways you saw in my miss pac-man bar top that i made for the customer for christmas you got the upright that i just did the uh, vertical image i did and these dedicated four ways are just getting popular so really cool i love where this is it's dead i'm right now middle of the screen so me playing miss pac-man was great three buttons so button one two and three i've always contemplated on changing that maybe putting button one here 
ever since uh, last week, I watched my cousin play her um, vertical. Um, it had three buttons on it. She thought button one was all the way over here to the right. So I, I don't know. Maybe it's too close to some people for button one. Maybe they'd rather button three. But luckily, it's a quick micro switch swap. So it's not that bad. But it's one, two, and three. So Galaga uses this. Uh, 1942 uses these two buttons and such. So it's really cool. Again, dedicated four-way. So this one's pretty cool too. This one we do have the coin door on it. Unlike counter and bodegas build, um, it's gonna be in a house. It's not gonna be an actual you know thing where a customer could put money into it. Um, but it's cool. It's definitely a nice feature. It gives you some realism to it. You can always drop quarters into it. It's got a key to it. Again, coin door on this. Red team molding, control panel, and again Pandora's box. If I lift this up right here, we got our guts. That right there has all of our games on it. Again, the Pandora's box. I have been a very big fan so far of the, definitely using cable ties, started to use some hot glue now to really keep wiring down. Uh, you know, my remotes, I always have these double-sided kind of Velcro style things. It's just nice, it's neat. It doesn't just shake, you have to really pull it off. So now as far as audio on this build, this is an upgraded audio. This is using the Z533. Uh, this is the 120 watts of sound. The volume rocker on this is pretty big. I have this on my V-Pin. This was on uh, Eugene's build. It's really loud. It's just, it's it's big. It's bulky. Normally, I do like to put my volume controllers underneath here. It's just, it's so big and it's kind of heavy. Double-sided tape doesn't really want to hold it. So I did hot glue this down. This is pretty permanent. This is not going anywhere. Um, the other issue I did not put this one here is because the wire on this, usually on the Z313s um, that I do, I could actually kind of dismantle the rocker, the, the wheel, and then you know put the wire through a hole. This right here, I couldn't. The only way for me to get this underneath was if I drilled a hole, you know, a notch out, basically built, you know, cam locked it around the wire. It was too frail, I didn't wanna break anything, so we do have the volume rocker inside the control panel. And what's great is that when you do close it, if you do wanna use the headphones, there is space for your wire. So it's not gonna crimp or crush your wire. So again, Z533. This also does have a bass volume rocker switch on the left side, so I put it onto medium. And again, the sound on this one is pretty insane compared to the Z313, which is like 30 watts or 40 watts. So as the back night, you can check out the wiring. Again, a lot of people do like to see these part of the videos because they like to get ideas. Speakers again, Z533s. We got our LEDs up here. I got my sensor up top here. So if he wants to change the colors, down below, you can basically see, again, big fan of the cable ties and the cable mount ties. This just keeps everything nice and clean and in transit. That is the subwoofer for the Z533. Uh, pretty big, but it does give a lot of sound. And we got our outlet uh, switch, I should say, the um, power strip. Again, all the builds, all the time, we'll have the power switch in the back. It's just easier for customers and such. If I go down a little, again, you can check it out. Nice clean wiring. We got our coin door mech, wiring going to the buttons, and again, Power strip. Now, while I'm here real quick, you can see that there's actually two different color strips. The blue on the left is my main LED strip that I always put. This specific Pandora's box, and I'll discuss exactly what I did with it. This is one of those uh, Pandora's boxes that come in a control panel that you could get to hook up to a TV. It does come with its own LED strip. I was contemplating on even bothering putting this, um, but you know what I did notice is that when you do plug the system in, the LEDs are always on. So anytime if I ever needed a troubleshoot to a customer, let's just say the Pandora's box doesn't look, work anymore, I'm gonna ask him, does that LED strip power on or is it off? Basically, kind of like a um, step where I could tell you if the Pandora's box either died. Um, but it's pretty cool actually because it does give a very unique glow effect in the back when I turn off the lights. Now real quick, just looking at the system in the dark. Uh, Doug messaged me, he saw the pictures, he goes, hey Vic, um, can you do an add-on and put the LED glow? And I said, Doug, buddy, I always do that. Uh, LED marquee, I've got the LED kick plate illuminated, basically got an LED strip going underneath the control deck, which is great. And yes, anytime I do 
any build with marquees and all that there's always the back glow if i put this more back uh more towards the back of the actual garage door it'd be more illuminated but it's pretty cool the big thing i did want to show off real quick is that you might be able to see it or you may not like there uh it was red in this purple that's because the the pandora's box led strip is like this red and my marquee is blue so it kind of gives like a cool color mix i like it i think it's pretty cool but yes there is led glow obviously and again 32 inch upright and like I always say, guys, you even see it. I always answer all comments. Um, I always read all the comments on YouTube and on Instagram. People message me. It's pretty crazy. I got people from Brazil message me. Shout out to Arcade Flipperama. That's my Brazilian bro right there. He's just killing the game in Brazil, making his own cabinets. I mean, it's pretty cool, honestly. I give a big shout out to you guys. I'm almost hitting 2,000 subscribers. Big shout out to you guys because you guys are enjoying the videos. And I do like to help. You could always message me. I always answer any question I possibly can. So again, shout out to you guys. That is it. 32 inch upright going out. So now real quick, we'll discuss the Pandora's box that I was saying before. This is a control panel. You guys can literally get these on eBay uh, or on Amazon. Um, you know, some people are going to watch this video and be like, oh, he upsold the Pandora's box. No, I didn't. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into this alone. This is just the software to it. Pandora's boxes are super easy, not to set up, meaning wiring wise, it's just, it's so user friendly. I'll discuss again, towards the end of this, we'll go over the actual Pandora's box. But somebody did message me on my YouTube video and said, hey, how did you, you know, upgrade the buttons on this Pandora's box? It is doable. Just keep in mind that like these boxes here, they come from China. These like buttons are pure garbage. The joysticks are pure trash. This is like, this is good for like a week and then it's just it's just trash so these are cool like you know to get like the little ones into the arcades or for you to just kind of experience it but expect a lot of headaches especially with the buttons it's really the buttons and the joysticks but for you to play arcade games you need the buttons and the joysticks so that's why i only gripe about these things so real quick to discuss what i did exactly because somebody said hey vic i don't understand how did you take the pandora's box how did you put the wires to it and all that so as you can see it's literally gutted the only thing that's left on this is just the speaker that's here. And again, I usually use these because some people do like control panels alone. And I could put a Raspberry Pi in this. You can't put a PC in this. Definitely not. Um, you could put a mini PC possibly, but usually Pandora's boxes or the Raspberry Pis go inside of this. But again, going back to what the customer requested, he said, hey, Vic, I don't understand. How did you do the wiring? Let's first do one thing real quick. Let's take a look at this control panel. So now real quick, these are running like knockoff Sanwas. Uh, you know, the connection usually with this shows like a Sanwa. It's it's a BS joystick. But the real big gripe I have with this stuff is these buttons. Um, these are Sanwa style buttons. Um, you know, they're, they're not, there's no actual micro switch per se. There is, but it's very tiny. It's inside of this. It's built inside of this. I am not a fan of these buttons at all. I personally have not experienced a real Sanwa button. You know what I mean? This really shouldn't have that much of a travel. It's like Sanwas are known for like, or HAP. I, I, I always use, uh, lose the company name, but this right here should be a little bit more like smoother. It should be an easier click or a faster button press. But the big thing I do have with these is that as you could see, and again, these are mostly the ones that you could get like on Amazon that I see people in like RK one up mods. They use these don't get Amazon buttons like and expect the world. They're nothing compared to the concave buttons. This isn't anything related to gaming solutions, but concave buttons is just, to me, it's a great feel on arcades. The big gripe I have with this is that, is that the micro switches here, the wires to this are small. Like that right there is not a standard head that goes into a standard micro switch. Got my wall of goodies, always got extra micro switches, buttons and all that. So real quick, just to kind of show you guys, this right here is a regular micro switch that you get, you know, for an arcade switch. And these that come with the Pandora's box, they do not fit at all on a standard micro switch, which is a huge pain in the ass, but it is what it is. So now somebody, like I said, somebody messaged me on YouTube and said, I don't understand how did you do it? Because the wires that I have don't fit micro switches. Yes. Get ready for a big headache, which is going to be basically you splicing the wires 
and then adding the correct heads to it. So literally, this is all stock from the Pandora's box. And basically, I took the ends and I cut them. So easy thing to do if you want to do it real quick. As you can see here, I still have all the wires connected here. Took the bundle of wire and I cut it. Left these here because this now was easy for me to tell what button color, or I should say what wire color went to what button. So as you can see here, this is player one. If I look at it real quick. Nope, I was upside down. That's player one. So now that means this is player one side here. So player one is here. I cut all these. And basically when I was ready to wire that up, button one was pink, button two was white, button three was gray, and so on. Again, the black is always the ground, so I knew exactly where that was. And again, saving the grounds, don't even waste your time because you're gonna have to recrimp all these heads. I cut them out. I always have extra either JAMA wires or Zinmo wires. I have so many Zinmo wires, it's, it's insane. So I usually use this, the Zinmo wire kit comes with Game Room Solutions buttons. So basically I took this, I cut this end off, cut this end off, and basically I just had all that wire now to play with. So when it came to this here, I put all the grounds in and then I had my Pandora's box control panel just like this. And basically when I was getting ready to wire, I would look at the control panel. So here, like I said, per, uh, pink was button one. So if you take a look real quickly, my purple, which comes from the Zinmo kit, drops down. And you could probably see it there a little bit. My wires are clean. There's my pink. So purple to pink. And that was it. You just have to repeat it. And again, shrink tubing is amazing. It's definitely an amazing tool. It is always great to use. That's really how the wiring is for that. Now, real quick, we do have the dedicated four-way and the three buttons. Basically, same thing, I have all of my, this right here is player one. So this is the only reason why this has more wires because we have an extra joystick and three buttons. So basically when it came to the joystick wiring here, I literally have these blue connections because they needed to be a little bit thicker. And you can see here I have two wires coming in which is coming from the joysticks and then it's one wire going to the Pandora's box. That's how we wired up basically in sync the four-way and player one. Buttons one, two, and three basically I took the end and then I basically added it to the micro switch here. So you can see that there's two wires going into here. Easy add. So again, buttons one, two, and three are the same as buttons one, two, and three. Hopefully that helps for the person that messaged me. Again, Pandora's box, you will need to do some work. Big thing also is remember, Player one side, because of that control panel, is very short. The wires are so short. So on my counter and bodega build, I had to extend the wires no matter what. So just get ready for that. Now we can take a quick look at the Pandora's box actual interface itself. I always like Pandora's boxes. Once you mentioned to me you have little kids, Pandora's boxes are easy to navigate. They can literally go behind the machine, flip the switch to turn the power on, give it a minute, they could boot it up and play it. Best thing with this is like you could button mash the hell out of this thing. You can't really mess up the interface. Whereas like a Raspberry Pi, they might go into the RetroArch settings or with a PC build, they might go and, and kind of go into desktop mode. This right here is very easy. They could literally wail on this stuff and it's not gonna do anything. This again is using the coin mech. So I never set Pandora's boxes to free play. Big thing that I noticed, it's with all Pandora's boxes. If you set it to free play, this specific video is just gonna be on a loop. It's never gonna move. If you look carefully, this is moving. We're on game 102 ever since I started talking. Basically, after about 10 seconds, it's gonna drop down to the next game. That's why I like Pandora's boxes and that's why I set it to pay to play. Even if you don't have a coin door, we still have coin buttons, but as you can see now, see, it went to a different game. If it was set to free play, it doesn't go down the list. So the only big thing is, you know, somebody coming up, if you have cousins over, they wanna play it, they're like, oh, this doesn't work, what's happening? You just gotta put a coin in. So now it's really great with these is that basically you could take a quarter and you just drop it in. And it inserts our coin. So it does even give like a nice little animated boop. Gonna bump up the volume a little bit. Not too crazy. And basically once you do put the coin in, now you're able to navigate the screen. And you got a timer here, it's 85 seconds to pick a game, which is plenty of time, honestly. Um, you know, you could basically go to search function. I could even go to my recent games that I was playing before. 
So for example, um, we could load up some 1942 button one. And again, I'll do a quick tutorial. I just want to show off the system itself. This will end with a tutorial for the customer. And there we go. So I can press start. And I'm also going to discuss the thing about I did notice about the arcade. So this right here is 1942. This right here is stretched. This is a 16 by 9 full screen stretch. I'm playing with one hand. What's also cool about this, and again, just to show you real quick, so I can navigate with this joystick and I can navigate with this joystick. Because again, these are in sync, these are linked together. So no matter what happens, these are basically just the same things. So I could either use this joystick for this game, which is actually what it's meant to be, or I could go to the left side. Again, big thing I do like about this joystick here is that I am dead center of the screen, which is a great feeling when you're actually playing it. Now, real quick, I do want to show this off. This doesn't do it for all games, but I did discover something. Uh, going back again to the coins, instead of you always dropping coins in, you can basically just put the coin button and now we're back. So here's actually a very big thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually search real quick because a customer messaged me and actually the one from Staten Island that came to see it. Pac-Man again is a must for the four ways, right? As you can see, there are two Pac-Man games. One has this F logo, which is Final Burn Alpha. This is a MAME emulator. This one here is MAME. This is another RK one. Same names, two different emulators. So check out what I discovered. If I launch the F, Final Burn Alpha, and again, you could do button one here or button one here. Let's see. This one, the Final Burn Alpha F, the screen is not stretched, which is great. And again, dedicated four-way. I am dead middle of the screen. And again, this is a four-way joystick. Ah, oh, that ghost didn't even bother to get me. Let's get some of these dots. Ah, I wanted to kind of add them up. Again, playing through the viewfinder. So that's Final Burn Alpha. To exit the system, you hold player one start, or you could leave the game alone for three minutes and it'll automatically exit out like retail mode. If I hold player one start, Button A is to insert coins if you have more coins, or button B is to exit. So second button is B. Now, I ran out of coins. I got to put a coin in. We're going to now launch MAME Pac-Man. Now, that in all honesty was Miss Pac-Man. This one is original Pac-Man. But as you can see, this is full screen stretch. So what I discovered is that anything with M, MAME, it's set to full screen stretch. I don't set that. The board is automatically set for that, so that's China board stuff. Well, these ghosts are flying right now. Look at this pink one. You ain't gonna get me. You ain't gonna get me. Yeah, there we go. Oh, they split. Oh, <laughs> but Mame is said to stretch. So again, the customer and I was talking to is that basically when it comes to Raspberry Pi builds, I could set the game to be stretch or not, and I just discovered that basically Pandora's box does have some features that it's stretched and it's not so i'm gonna real quick and again as you can see i'm able to search i could use this joystick or this one i'm gonna clear we're gonna do one more just to show you guys i'm gonna do i'm gonna pull the camera back so you can see it oh not do i need some donkey kong in this d-o-n-k and again the search feature on this is pretty cool so we have two donkey kongs final burn alpha main arcade right so now if i go here Let's launch Final Burn Alpha. Button one is to start. Some people think it's start button to start. No, it's just button one. So I'm gonna press start. And as you can see, this is not stretched. Let's bump up the volume a little bit. This is classic right here. I love the little sound. Doom, 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 doom. Ah, classic, here we go. Doom, 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 doom. So now again, Final Burn Alpha, not stretched. Using four-way joystick to play. Yeah. Good, good. Gonna breeze through this level real quick. Button one to jump, button one to jump, button one to jump, bring it back, go Mario, go! Oh, damn it, I'm looking at the viewfinder. <laughs> now, if I exit, again, this was Final Burn Alpha. I'm gonna put another coin in, because I have no coins. And I'm going to launch MAME. MAM. <laughs> Somebody wrote to me like, oh, you don't sound like you know what you're thinking because you don't say MAM arcade right. All right, everybody relax. Start button. 
And as you can see now, MAM, MAM Arcade is set to full screen stretch. Again, some people don't mind it. Some people do notice the difference. I sure do. But at least Pandora's box, it's not on all the games. It's more about, you know, the main essentials. I don't think Centipede, and I'm gonna load that real quick. Centipede does not have that option. There we go. There we go, come on, come on. We must rescue the princess. Go, yes, 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 oh, bring it back, bring it back. Yeah, awesome. Cool, right? Gonna hold down player one start. Gonna exit out, just one last one real quick. I'm gonna launch Centipede. So I could go into the search feature, S-C-N-T. And Centipede, there's only a Final Burn Alpha, which we discovered is not stretched. So Centipede action, press player one start. Now this again is a trackball game. Unfortunately, Pandora's Box does not have trackball add-on. Um, there may be a way to add it. Uh, I personally have not done it yet, but apparently, you know, it's a USB and, you know, up, down, left, right. I haven't tested it yet, so I can't guarantee that, but Centipede, not stretched. So now I'm not gonna do like a complete game list, but remember this with this Pandora's box. Every system, Pandora's box, Pi, it has its advantages and disadvantages. So this actually has a very nice search feature, which is really cool. This does have PSP games. So there is about 40 PSP games I'm just gonna fly through it real quick. I'm not gonna do every game. Um, you know, I don't, unfortunately these don't have game lists. This has PS1 games. There's only two pages worth. This does have N64 games. There's 110 games to it. You guys could basically just kind of pause the video if you want or slow it down. Again, remember though, N64 was not six buttons. It had like nine buttons. So not all the games will work. Um, this one is, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank on it, but I'm just going to fly through it. This has 73 pages to it. Uh, why am I drawing a blank on this system? PEC, NEC, something like that. So retro consoles too. This does have the super Nintendo four pages. Pretty cool. So let's see like Royal wrestling. That's like another funny thing is like the names that they put to this. So let's see, this has Super Mario. That looks like Super Mario World 3. We got Game Boy Advance. And it's cool, like this, seeing Game Boy Advance, it's it's pretty feasible because it has enough buttons to play it. We got another Game Boy Advance. We got some Xbox, which isn't really Xbox, to be honest with you. This now is gonna actually launch because my time's gonna run out. And with consoles like this, as you can see real quick, it did say five minutes remaining. So there is basically timed on this. So as you can see also, like I'm gonna bring it back to the menu just for kicks. The game names don't exactly match the game name. Let's just say this is called Cartoon Zone. It's Comics Zone. So you got to keep that in mind. Again, it is a Chinese board. It's a Pandora's box. You got some more consoles. This does have the Dreamcast, a couple of games. So for example, I always laugh at this. This is Cartoon Hero versus Capcom, which again is really Marvel versus Capcom. I guess maybe they had to do it like that. But I was basically searching for a couple of games. Um, this right here is Final Burn Alpha. I'm just gonna breeze through this. You could always slow it down as this is really your arcade list. This is MAME, MAM. I can't believe that guy wrote to me. You don't pronounce MAM Arcade right. You don't know what you're doing. Jeez. And we're back to PSP. So um, customer from Staten Island, Chris came out yesterday and he goes, hey Vic, does this have Spy Hunter? S, L, M, N, O, P. And unfortunately again, they make so many Pandora's boxes, there's no real game list. So if I look up the word spy, we got spy special project, that's not Spy Hunter. Um, it's actually two of them. There is one that's a race. We're gonna launch that just to see it But there is spy hunter 2. So as of right now, there is no spy hunter 1. He noticed like oh hey Vic There it is spy hunter 1. I was like no, that's a Game Boy Advance game It's not like the arcade game, but now I see this special project. Why let's just let's just load this up Who knows it might be the actual spy hunter 
No, it is not. <laughs> it is not Spy Hunter. So, again, not every game. And unfortunately, again, I don't have a game list for these because they don't make game lists for these. Um, other ones they do. Pandora's Box DX, you'll find it. Um, real quick, what did I want to do? Yesterday, I was looking up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I got scared because I couldn't find it. I looked at the word, like, teen. And, like, oh, it showed up. Teen Mutant Turtles. Right? So I think I looked up TMNT. Maybe I did that. I looked up TMNT and I didn't find it. But it is actually there. So that's the big thing also that there is four players. And then there's the two-player ROM. So, you know, I understand there's five games of the same game. But it's four-player, two-player ROM. This, I always suggest the two-player setup. Because you don't have four joysticks. Or you don't have an extra controller. So this does have TMNT. Love it. Holding start. We're going to exit back. And again, right now, it is basically not going to move now because I have no coins. If basically you go and leave the system here and let it launch, it'll basically play through the games, slideshow through the games, a track mode. Here's when I was laughing out because while I was while I build or wire, I let Pandora's box run and I was laughing at this one because look at this. We have sponge block and friends. And then we have Spongebox and his friends. So I was laughing at that because like, what is Spongebox? And it wound up being a actual Spongebob game. Um, <laughs> so again, that is your Pandora's box. Keep, again, keep in mind, again, it is what it is. It is funny. Um, you know, some people do wish that they found the actual game and stuff. But there you go. That's, uh, that's, that's Pandora's box. I don't want to say anything bad on it. Um, but it's cool. And again, with these type of consoles, you add coins to it. We're pressing start. You could use all the buttons here. And that's another thing you have to kind of learn. Like for example, here, like there's A. A is here, depending on the system. You know, like the Game Boy system, this is A and stuff. You know, you just gotta kind of learn it. The other big thing I do wanna show real quick, um, I'm gonna actually leave it here. If, let's say you had extra coins, right? And you try to press start and it usually adds time. Like me pressing start now, it adds time. Consoles, you could actually use player to start and it'll add time. But you could also do hold player one start and you could press A button to insert coin. So if I insert the coin, the times get added. Boom, see that? So some systems you actually do have to hold down player one. It's more about the consoles to be honest. And again, as you can see, like, this was a Game Boy game, I believe. And we're just trying to figure out, you know, how the game works. Cool. So again, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to follow me. I have at Gamecase Arcades, which is basically just always basically pictures. I'm not really on that active. My real Instagram that I'm always active on stories, you can see when I do the builds, is Vic underscore VP. This right here, this image is going to go out to Womack. Womack asked me this like three times and I'm going to just finally do it. I know I asked you a couple of weeks ago about NFL Blitz. Is it possible to get NFL Blitz on this upright? So I posted a picture of the Miss Pac-Man build. Uh, he commented on this. You cannot get NFL Blitz on this. This is a vertical image, but he basically said, Hey Vic, I want an image or I want a system that will play this NFL Blitz and this upright. Womack, this is for you, man. The Pandora's box will do what you want. We do have NFL Blitz. If you're watching the video, we do have Miss Pac-Man on this. So I could literally run Miss Pac-Man. I'm going to do it real quick because I'm going to actually send him this snippet on Instagram. So we have Miss Pac-Man, dedicated four-way, good to go. You want Miss Pac-Man, right? Now you want NFL Blitz. I'm going to search for you NFL Blitz. The big thing to always keep in mind, this is for anybody. If you need NFL Blitz, the arcade ROM, we had actually put quarters in, the PC is the only system that will play it. This has NFL Blitz for the N64. It's playable. The only thing I do notice that on this specific one, there is no run. Um, there's no run feature. Uh, I don't know if N64 didn't have it, but that's the only thing I do notice. You could definitely pass and stuff. It's just 
as far as six buttons, it doesn't have it. So, Womack, there you go, buddy. This does have NFL Blitz in this one system, 32-inch upright. Not the vertical one, the Miss Pac-Man one that you commented on. That will not play NFL Blitz. <laughs> you do need a regular screen, non-vertical to run NFL Blitz. And again, this Pandora's box does run it. Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, again, NFL Blitz, just like what I did on Counter and Bodega's build. I made the video. I said, NFL Blitz, my guys. And here we go. We're, oh, I just got taken out. Again, NFL Blitz and Miss Pac-Man on this single machine. Womack, this is what you want. This is the machine that you probably want, okay? Okay, throw this ball out. Oh, interception. Awful, awful. But yes, Womack, there you go, buddy. So now last one real quick, last thing from a comment, um, actually from the person from Staten Island. Um, love this, it's, it's very difficult for me to, ex it was difficult for me to explain it. Uh, customer said, hey Vic, show me a high definition game. Um, I don't know exactly what that means. Um, he literally said, hey Vic, is this a high definition game? So whenever you say high definition game, I'm thinking like a 1080p high graphic intense game you know, models, 3D models, you know, it's not like Street Fighter 2. Um, you know, again, he said, hey, Vic, is this a high definition game? Um, a couple of things to comment about that. Um, you know, the system, it is in 1080p, it's in HD, but that doesn't mean that everything's in HD. So he said to me, hey, Vic, is this your most high def game? And I said, yes. I mean, this right here is a PSP game. And as you can see with the character models, it's HD. It's not 4K Street Fighter V HD. This is PSP HD. Um, so I went, we were literally hanging out. And again, great guy, but people have the same questions, so I don't mind it. Um, I did load up Street Fighter for him. I'm gonna do that actually right now because I didn't do my signature where I do a one-handed Aduka and I did it on my um, Instagram story, and I didn't do it here. That's a no-no, I gotta do it real quick. So I'm gonna just launch like Street Fighter 2. I launched this and he said, hey Vic, is this HD? Is this high definition? Um, yes and no. Uh, the screen is 1080p. The image is stretched, but you still have arcade, you know, 16, 32-bit characters. I, again, he, that's what he kept asking me. He said, is this HD? There's a one-handed Aduken. Um, I, 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 no. Um, this again, it's, this is an arcade game. Ryu doesn't change to Street Fighter V Ryu, if that's the question. Um, again, it's not, I'm not making fun of anybody. It's just, that was the question that was handed to me and I really didn't know how to take it. Um, so he said, is this HD, is this high def? And I said, no, it's, it's high def, meaning the screen is 720p, 1080p, but it doesn't change the, the character. So he goes, oh yeah, I do notice that this is very pixelated. And I said, it's an arcade game though. That's, that's what, that's what it looks like. Um, you know, it's not current gen PC Street Fighter V. Um, so again, <laughs> I got hit with that question. It kind of threw me off a little bit. Not in a bad way, I'm not making fun of anybody. Uh, it just, it kind of just threw me off. Um, for example, he wanted Mortal Kombat. Um, so if I look up Mortal, M-O-R. So we have Mortal Kombat for the MAM Arcade. And then we even have like PlayStation 1, even an N64 Mortal Kombat. So I'm just gonna launch, let's say Mortal Kombat 4. This is for the PlayStation 1. Uh, and I launched it with him and he goes, is this a high definition game? Um, <laughs> same thing. I'm kind of still stuck on. I'm like, yes and no. Uh, again, the image is 1080p, 720p, but this is a PlayStation one game. Um, PlayStation one was never HD. It was never 1080p high def. It's not MK 11. It's not like a current gen game MK 11. Um, so I showed him this and I said, look, this is PlayStation one. He goes, oh, okay. I see it, but it's very pixelated. And I said, yes, it's stretched full screen, but it's also a PlayStation one game. Um, again, uh, you know, I get hit with a couple of questions and that one kind of threw me off. Is this HD? Um, 
again, not making fun of everybody, but it was very, it's, it's such a vague comment. So I kept saying to him, I was like, do you want like Street Fighter five graphics? Cause you're going to need a PC build. Um, but all in all, it wound up to be pretty good. He's actually going to pull the trigger on a Pandora's box. Um, again, just like to explain and, you know, give you another example of a customer asking a couple of questions and there you go. All right, this part of the video is going to be straight for Doug. This is going to be a tutorial on how to work your machine. It's not that difficult. I always like to make the video to show it off. So you got your power connector. You got a little switch here. You could flip the switch and basically the system and everything will turn on on its own. The TV will turn on on its own. The system will turn on on its own. The LED lights will turn on on its own. So a big thing to just keep in mind that basically the LED lights you could see here, they are directly connected to the power strip. So those are always gonna turn on. Again, flip the switch. I'm not gonna make any cuts on this. The system will boot up on its own and just leave it be. Takes about like 30 seconds once you actually get into the actual game menu to let it load up. While we're here, while we wait for the system to boot up, you do have your control deck. You'll never really open this. The only time you really open this is for the volume rocker. So we do have your volume rocker here. Um, you know, spinning it to the right will make your volume louder. To the left, lower it. You could even turn it off. There's a little click to turn it off. But the big thing here is that there is audio in. So if you have like music, you wanted to play through the system and there's a headphone jack here. So you could always use that, put your wire here and then you could just close the cabinet if you wanted to use headphones. Now, again, the system is loaded right now. Again, I'm going to try not to do any cuts. Now I would say like after about 15, 20 seconds, you're good to go. You could use the coin button here, or you could put coins in the coin mech. When I get to your house, you'll let me know. Do you want me to disable this? Um, if I was to disable it, there's basically this black wire that's going to hang right next to it. All you got to do is reconnect it. It's very easy. I could always guide you in a video call. Right now, the system, you cannot do anything with the system until you insert a coin. So again, you have your coin buttons up top here, or you could put coin in the actual coin box. So for right now, I'm gonna use the button here for convenience. And once you put the coin in, there we go, we are in. So now you're able to navigate. On the top here, you do have your categories or tabs. This has all the games in this list. So it's pretty cool, you can navigate, you could see what's up and all that. Couple of shortcuts real quick. If you press player one start here, it will jump to the search tab, which is a great feature. So instead of you just pushing the button up, you could go to your search and you could search for a game. So as you can see right now, I'm using the joystick to navigate the keyboard. Button one, this is button one. You could basically put some words in, you could you know put some text in. Another cool feature again, while I'm in the keyboard, if I press player one start, it brings me back to this to the tab here. I could actually go to recent games you played and using the joystick, you could go down and you could check out some recent games. Let's load up some Pac-Man. So I want to play Pac-Man. We are on Pac-Man. Button one is going to start the game. It's going to go through a little loading picture. Just got to let it do its thing. Boom, we are in. We got to press player one start. Pac-Man, awesome. You could use this joystick, which is really why we put this joystick here for any four-way games such as Miss Pac-Man. And we could use that. You could also use this if you wanted. But for this game, you do want to use that joystick. It's great. Now, as far as adding more coins, you could just add coins. And you can see there's a coin counter here. You could press start. This isn't a two-player game, so pressing player two won't do anything. Um, but if you did do it, it will basically add more lives to it. If you wanted to exit this game, you're bored and you want to exit. If you leave the system alone for three minutes, it will automatically exit. But I don't want to wait three minutes. I want to exit now. You're going to hold down player one start. And you can see here, button A will insert a coin. That's A. If I hold down player one start again, button B, second one, will exit. So A, B, button one button two that's probably the best way to say it now that we're back on the main screen we're going to do one thing real quick i'm going to load up tmnt so play some ninja turtles and we're good i could press player one start and we're good i have to insert coins because i ran out of coins for player two so if i do another coin i can now press player two start and now we're in it we're a-okay and we're good to go pick our fighters 
and we play some Ninja Turtles. We're tired, we're bored, we don't wanna play anymore. Hold down button one, second button, and there you go. Very easy to navigate. Again, player one start will load up these tabs. So if I go to category, you'll see this game, the system list here. So this is PSP, that's a PSP logo. So there's a couple of PSP games. We got some PlayStation 1 games. We got some N64. And then we even have some retro consoles. You have even like the Super Nintendo, for example. Really cool. The main one really that a lot of people do notice is this one, the F. This is Final Burn Alpha. This is all arcade games. A lot of fighting games. You got King of Fighters, Street Fighter, classic like Metal Slug. Everybody loves Metal Slug. We can load that up real quick. And again, instead of you going through this list, you could always do the search function. So I'll load up some Metal Slug, button one to load that. Again, you got always a little loading video and player one start. Cool. Could skip this. Awesome. Again, playing with player one. I could always bring in player two, but I have no coins. You got to insert coins. When you insert the coins, you can see it there. You press player two start, and now player two is in. Awesome. We're gonna exit the game, holding down player one start, button B, button two, exit. That's really it. And again, if you are in this menu and it doesn't move, that means you have no coins. You gotta put a coin in. Very easy. Now, as far as shutting down, can't get easier than this. You could literally, just the way it is, come back here and you flip the switch. That is it. System is shut it down and all good to go. You never wanna do a quick on and off. Um, you know, let's just say right now I'm gonna power it back on. I'm gonna wait about 30 seconds to power it back on, which is fine now. Again, gonna hit this, boom. Again, everything will turn on on its own, TV, Pandora's box, and everything. Doug Buddy, I hope you enjoy your machine. Feel free to message me if you need any help.